Yes. You know, it's interesting. When you come to our conference, uh, the overall feeling is a little bit different than the sentiment when you go outside the doors because you hear from people from politics and from economics. So you heard Ken Griffin today, you know, from the, the hedge fund Citadel managing $28 billion. And, you know, talking a little bit about how he's got all these young people that never saw a downtick in the market before. And then you talk about what David Cameron, the former prime minister of Great Britain, was talking about, not only social issues, but economic issues, what's going on in the UK with Brexit. And it's more of a centrist view versus maybe some of the skewed views that the populists are, are talking about. So overall in the markets today, I heard some optimism. But at the same time, I think people are looking at a little skepticism with the lofty levels. You run a big exchange. How, how do you feel about where we are? You know, Scott, I, I look at it as one of these guys that be careful how to predict this, make sure I can manage it. And that's really what I want to make sure I can do. You know, we're managing trillions of dollars a day in notional value of products. We've become the largest futures exchange in the world. We just took on a new acquisition, as you know, with Next. And for me, it's important to make sure that I can manage, mitigate the risk so people can manage their risk. What do you make of what Peter Navarro said last week about Wall Street and quote unquote globalist billionaires who are trying to sabotage President Trump's trade talks with China? Well, the good news is I'm not a globalist billionaire for sure. I didn't make that category. <laughs> um, you know, listen, I, I think that what, what Mr. Navarro said was people have opinions and, and I think they have the right to express those opinions. And uh, for my sake, I would hope that the administration would have a great appreciation for that because the guy that he works for is also a, also a billionaire. But you, you represent, though, I mean, you're in Chicago, but nonetheless, um, you are one of the faces of what Wall Street represents, yeah. right? Yeah. Financial industry. Absolutely. Did it bother you that he said that? You know, he got, look, he, uh, Larry Kudlow gave him a, a really harsh rebuke yeah. today. Well, I didn't hear what Larry had to say. I, mean, I have a lot of respect for Larry Kudlow. But again, I think that, you know, as far as what Mr. Navarro said about billionaires should probably keep their mouths closed, I think is a ridiculous statement, to be honest with you. How do you think the trade talks are going to work out? The trade talks, I think that, listen, as far as with China? Yeah. Here, I mean, they're, they're a very patient group of people. And I think what people are missing is, you know, they don't have elections like we have here every couple of years, like we went through last week. Our president has election coming up in 18 months. They don't have an election, Scott. They're, they're a communist nation. And I think that their patience level is much greater than the, that of the United States. Okay, so you're saying that you expect this to be drawn out maybe longer than some others. No, I think this, I think we're going to have no choice but to capitulate to some extent in order no, for we this are. to go. Yes, I do. I think we do because, listen, the farm community is very important to the United States of America. When you're looking at soybeans backing up here in the United States that could potentially be rotten crops, that they are now spoiled, what are they going to do? They're a very loud voice in Washington. I think they're going to have a very loud impact as far as what the administration does on these tariffs. Quite interesting because the, the consensus seems to be that given what's going on with the Chinese economy, their stock market and, and otherwise, that they're going to be the ones to blink. Well, again, they don't have elections. They're not accountable like we are here. And I think they'll wait it out. And I think they have a history of doing so. They're, again, their, their time horizons, not like ours, which is in, measured in nanoseconds, their time horizons measured in 20, 50 years at a time. So I do believe that uh, something needs to get done. And I also, Scott, here, I really believe that trade deficits are not the worst thing for the United States of America. I think it protects our interests, gives us a seat at the table, and lets us be a thought leader for the rest of the world because the rest of the people around the table are now clients of the United States. Because why? Because we have a deficit with them. Not a bad thing, not a bad investment. That sounds like a guy who does, doesn't believe in, in tariffs at all. I do not believe in tariffs at all, no. So you tell the administration this is a bad idea? I'm very careful you about not telling them? the administration anything. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't talk to them. Again, I run a, a neutral, I'm a neutral facilitator of risk management, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. I'm not trying to tell them what to do, what they shouldn't do. But the question being asked is how is this going to play out? In my opinion, you know, the farm community is going to have a big say in this. And rightfully so. So I think that uh, something needs to get done. And I think it's healthy for the United States to get something done.